Take flight, take flight take morning. Flight morning. My name is Lainey Doran. And my name is Katie Bauer. And I'm Ryan Kennedy with Sports. This is The Horner Report. What's up, Holmesdale? Welcome back to our third edition of The Horner Report. My name is Lainey Doran, and I'm here with my co-anchor, Katie Bauer. Thanks, Lainey. November is upon us, and it's my favorite time of year. There's so much to look forward to with the holidays right around the corner. I know, right? It's my favorite time of year. I'm already listening to my Christmas music, and I'm looking forward to all of the winter festivities. Uh, don't you think it's a little early for that? I mean, we still need to get through Thanksgiving. The Christmas season starts right after Halloween. I like to get an early start on the Christmas chair. Whatever. We're getting off topic with all this holiday talk. Speaking of what we have to look forward to, why don't we start with a rundown of today's stories? Of course! First, I spoke with the cast and director of the Homedale High School fall play, Empowered, how one Girl Scout nearly destroyed the world's economy. Ariel Borges and Sophie Burden profiled the Homedale High School gymnastics team. Ryan Kennedy is here with sports, including a sectional championship for the boys' soccer team. And finally, we will get to know our other assistant principal, Ms. Thomas. But first, I got a sneak peek at Homedale High School's upcoming fall play, Empowered. Let's check it out. Hey Hornets, I'm here at the Homedale High School Auditorium to get a good look at the Homedale Theater Guild's fall production of Empowered, How One Girl Scout Nearly Destroyed the World's Economy, written by Don Zolis and directed by our beloved Dr. DeVivo. The HGG was kind enough to let us sit in on one of their rehearsals and get some exclusive interviews with the cast. Let's roll the footage. So can you introduce yourself and your character? Hi, my name is Caroline Liddell and I play Cheyenne. I'm Bella and I play Kennedy. Kennedy's a little goofy, silly, kooky, crazy, but she's fun. <laughs> How is this show different from the other shows you've done at Homedale High School? Um, well, it's a lot funnier, I would say. Fire! You can use fire! The show is just very silly and goofy. Um, it's very fun and you're going to laugh a lot when you come see it. It's kind of a ridiculous show, and that's that's the best part. Now you go over there and count how many pieces of gum have been squished into the sidewalk. 147. I already did that today. What is your favorite part about the HTG? My favorite part about the HTG is the community because everyone is so much fun to hang out with and be around. We've created such a community where uh, everyone can be so comfortable as themselves. It is such a wonderful experience to um, have been with these people for the last four years, and I am so excited to embark on my senior year with the HGG. Well, you heard it here. Come see me and the rest of the cast in Empowered on November 17th, 18th, and 19th for a great show. Break a leg, everyone. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Katie. You can watch the fall play at 7 p.m. on November 17th, 18th, and 19th in the high school auditorium. Be sure to check it out. Moving along, Sophie Burden and Ariel Borges had the opportunity to interview our gymnastics team, including Coach Ryan and senior Jaden Wong, who has recently committed to Quinnipiac. Let's see what they had to say. Here's Sophie. They seem to really like each other. They seem to be friends and supportive of one another and coaching one another when it's necessary and it's nice to see them all come together. So what's your name? Sabrina. That's great. How do you feel like this gymnastics team has helped you through high school? I think it's given me like a group of girls that like at the end of the day I go back to and like I'm always close to them because we have team bonding and it just brings us together outside of school but also a part of school. We want to see each other like do good. We want to see everybody succeed. So you play sixth all around in the recent competition. How does that make you feel? It made me feel good because um, it was my last short conference and I was glad to place top 10. Well, congratulations. I've heard it's a big deal and we're all so proud of you. Jaden is fantastic and it's really gratifying to coach a girl who's so talented and so coachable. 
But we started this team four years ago with three seniors, and it's it's really sad that they're, or, I'm sorry, three freshmen. And it's sad that they're now seniors and gonna be graduating and we acquired another one along the way. So now we have four seniors and they're really talented. So aside from Jaden, we have a lot of depth and a lot of talent. Emma, what do you plan to do after your high school experience in gymnastics is over? I think I'll probably do club or intramural in college and not really like do as much as I did in high school and throughout like my childhood. What's your favorite part of the team? Look at them. Thank you so much to the gymnastics team and Mrs. Ryan for this amazing gymnastics year and winning in their competitions. Especially thank you to the seniors who will be leaving this year. We'll miss you. Back to you in the studio. Congratulations, Jaden, on committing to a great university and gymnastics program at Quinnipiac and to the rest of the girls on a fabulous season. On the topic of sports and fabulousness, I think we should hear from our sports anchor, Ryan Kennedy. Sports are more in his realm of the show. Take it away, Ryan. Wow, thanks for the introduction, Katie. Right back at you. The boys' soccer team enjoyed their best season since 2018. The highlight was winning the Central Jersey Group 2 sectional title, one to nothing over Wall. Here's how it happened at Bob Rogge Field. Colin Hines' first half goal turned out to be the only goal of the game. Stefan Kapernov set up Hines after he carried the ball for 20 yards. Hines did the rest, hitting a rocket into the upper corner of the net. That was the game winner as Holmdahl captured the sectional title for the first time under Cap coach Matt Isaacson. I want to congratulate you guys on winning the state sectional title. That's a really big deal. Congratulations. Thank Andrew, how's it feel to come off the bench, provide a lot of great energy, make some big defensive plays? How's that feel? Um, it feels awesome. It's really special knowing that we were in the same spot last year and we lost in the finals, but this year we were, we were able to capitalize, so it feels great. Yeah, congratulations on that. And Jeremy, you've led the defense all year. You've had an incredible postseason. How would you guys continue to do this in the final round? I think it's just all comes down to what we do off the field. We bond like a lot. Last night we were playing FIFA, the FIFA tournament the whole night. I think it really, it's what we do off the field that contributes to what we do on the field. Congratulations on that. I'm here with David Warner, Colin Hyde. Colin, you had the only goal today. It was the reason you guys won. How does that feel? I mean, it feels great. It was a banger, game winner. After defeating Wall, the boys unfortunately ended their season with a loss to Del Ren in the Group 2 state semifinal. They finished with a record of 18 wins, 3 losses, and 1 tie. Now turning to boys football, they concluded their season with a big win against Tom Surther South. Running back Anthony Saducati had a monster game rushing for 132 yards and two touchdowns. As a team, Homdell rushed for 352 yards in the game. The Hornets put the game away quickly in the second half. Quarterback Trey Critchley scores on the two-yard keeper. And then, here's the nail in the coffin. Will Gilfilm with the interception. He returned it for 42 yards, a pick six as Homdell was victorious 48-30. Here's Ryan Lopez with Coach Reynas following the win. Okay, I'm so happy for the team, uh, but especially the senior group of kids. Uh, so they've they've dealt with quite a bit of adversity. We've had some injuries. We've had, uh, you know, I, I had some I had some health uh, things that kept me kind of away from the team for a good month. Um, and they've just been through a ton of adversity in the past two three months during the season. So to see them come out here and, and put together a, a good performance and, and beat a good Tom's River team. Uh, I, I just couldn't be happier, especially for the senior kids. So we talk to the kids all the time about dealing with adversity and uh, so much of your character is defined by how you respond when bad things happen. Uh, we had, like I said, we had some bad things happen to us uh, and I'm proud of the fact that they stuck together. I'm proud of the fact that they continued to get better uh, and I'm certainly proud of the fact that they went out and, and, and found a way to get a good win tonight. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Coach, and best of luck next year to the football team. And finally, the girls' volleyball team won their first round state playoff match against Hillside. Sophomore Mackenzie T. Van finished the year with 142 kills and 42 blocks. And junior Lola Sparks was also a spark in this season with 54 kills. The Hornets will lose their next game to the wall, but they definitely have something to build on for next year. I'm Ryan Kennedy, and that is your Hornets Sports Report. Congratulations to all of Homedale's fall sports teams for ending their season strong. 
To close out today's show, I had the wonderful opportunity to interview our assistant principal, Miss Thomas. Did you know that there's a street in Fairhaven named after her grandparents? Or that she played field hockey in high school? Neither did I. So why don't we get to know Miss Thomas? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Fairhaven, New Jersey. It's a little town not too far from here. There's, it's about one square mile. Where'd you go to high school? Rumson Fairhaven. Um, actually, my family has lived in Fairhaven for over a hundred years, and there is a street in the town named after my great grandmother that my family lived on. What were you like in high school? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, high school, I was a good student, but not like exceptional. Um, I took some honors classes. I took some regular classes. I enjoyed the entire high school experience. What sports or activities were you involved in? I was one of those people who tried everything once. So I played field hockey, I played soccer, I played basketball, but you didn't ask me if I was good at it. I wasn't the best athlete, but I was the good sport on the team. What are some of your goals for Home Doll High School? Um, well, what's really important to me is diversity, equity, and inclusion. I feel like everybody needs a sense of belonging in high school. High school is hard enough, so if you're a little different, it should be okay to be different. Um, I also think wellness is really important, student wellness, mental health. I'm really excited about our wellness room and our therapy dog, and um, this year we're having a new program come. It's called um, Nurtured Heart, and it's really about just supporting students in every way that we can. What did you do before coming to Homedale High School? I have been in education for over 20 years, so I've been a special ed teacher, a regular ed teacher, a reading specialist, an instructional coach, a vice principal. What is the biggest lesson you've learned in life? I think for me, it's about not worrying about what other people think about you. It's really about what you think about yourself. You know, I spent so much time trying to do all the things that everybody else wanted me to do. And the reality is, I need to be happy on the inside. And then that'll just automatically make everything around me happy. Would you rather drink tea or coffee? Definitely coffee. What's your Starbucks order? Ooh, pumpkin spice latte. That's my favorite in the whole world. Would you rather have a dog or a cat? Um, definitely a dog. I have a little new pandemic puppy, a little Cavapoo. Ginger, she's so cute. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Don't know that I have one. I'm not an ice cream fan. Summer or winter? Definitely summer. I'm a summer person. I love the beach and um, summer. What's your favorite song? Oh my God, I have so many. Anything like 90s R&B is kind of my favorite, but then I also like classic rock. I kind of listen to a little bit of everything. Where would you most like to travel to? Ooh, that's a good one. Europe. And the plan is to go this summer. So I'm hoping that's going to happen. Anywhere specific in Europe? Italy. I'm actually going to Italy in June, I think. What's your favorite food? Oh my gosh, I'm such a foodie, so that is really hard to answer because I probably like every food imaginable, but my latest right now is Taco Maha, which is this place in New York City that has like Indian tacos. So it's like a, like a butter chicken on cheesy naan bread. Wow, thanks to Ms. Thomas for sharing her personal life story with us. I feel like we see our teachers and administrators all the time, yet we know almost nothing about them. It's so nice to see a different side to them. I couldn't agree more. The more we know, the more we can connect with them. Maybe we should interview more staff members. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that wraps up today's episode of the Horner Report. Remember to add us on social media. Our Twitter and Instagram are at HHS Hornet Report, and our Snapchat is at Hornet Report. Be sure to join us next time where we'll bring you this week's best at HHS.